Okay, sorry I'm a little late. Yeah, my name is Dr. Perez, it's nice to meet you. Absolutely, I was having a look over your chart. Um, excuse me while I take a couple notes as we talk. I got a call from your primary care physician asking if I could get you in last minute. Absolutely, not a problem. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and jump in? It looks like we have a lot to go over today. You've been having a hard time. Yeah, okay. Before we get started, um, is it okay if I have you confirm your date of birth for me? And what is the correct spelling of your last name? Okay, and for the purposes of our appointment today, is it okay to refer to you as your first name? Okay. Perfect. Alrighty, so I do have a couple of questions, just some preliminary questions to get us started so I know kind of what to look out for today. It looks like you have been having some neurological symptoms that you're not sure if they're kind of related to a concussion. Okay, so you had a concussion about two years ago, but you've been having some stressors lately, so you're not sure if these symptoms are somewhat related to the concussion or post-concussive syndrome, which you've had some issues with before, according to your primary care physician. Okay. Also may be concerned that these might just be some kind of neurological deficits that are happening because of the ongoing stress. Okay. Well, that is completely valid. I would like to talk to you a little bit about those external stressors. Can you tell me just a little bit about what's going on, just to the extent that you're comfortable? You don't have to go into detail if you don't want to. Okay, so you had a family member pass away recently. I'm very sorry to hear that. Absolutely, it's always difficult losing a family member regardless of the circumstances. Okay. And that was about two weeks ago. Okay, I apologize for any external noise that you're hearing. We have a little bit of construction going on in the hospital. Yeah, I have some expansions happening. Unfortunately, we can only work around it so much. Okay. Okay, and so it was your uncle that passed away on your father's side. Do you mind if I ask what he passed away for? Was it something medical related? It wasn't medical related. Okay. Absolutely, you don't need to go into any further detail there. And is there anything else that you've had going on recently? Stress with work, okay. Related to travel, okay, so you travel for work pretty frequently, okay. That is completely understandable. Being away from home has been hard for you, yeah, okay. How much longer are you thinking you're gonna be away from home? Just a few weeks, you're going home soon. Perfect, okay, well I bet you're excited. Yeah, okay, well that's good news. Absolutely, so excited for you. I'm glad you'll be going home. I'm sure that'll alleviate a decent amount of stress for you. Yeah, okay. And is there anything else that's going on in your personal life that maybe would be causing this stress? Your brother was diagnosed with cancer. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Your family has been having a rough time. Yeah. Okay. Um, prognosis looks good, though. Perfect. So I assume he's been meeting with his oncologist. And so far, as good news as it can be. Okay. Well, I'm so sorry to hear about the cancer. It just... It's one of those diseases that just it's like why you know you just wonder why why it happens i know i am so sorry to hear that i can totally understand why that would be increasing your stress levels okay and do you know what type of cancer he was diagnosed with just for the purposes of your medical history you do, okay, but your brother was adopted. Okay, um, I will go ahead and jot it down just so we have the information, but obviously, you know, for the purposes of your medical history, it's not something that we would need to worry about. Okay. 
Okay, well, thank you so much for that information. It obviously sounds like you've had a lot going on recently, and it's totally understandable that you would feel like you're having a hard time. Yeah, absolutely. We can only handle so much, of course. Okay. So, aside from these kind of external stressors, can you talk to me a little bit about what's been going on with you physically? You said you've been having some kind of physical manifestations from the stress. Some eye twitching. Okay. Is that one eye specifically or both eyes? Your right eye. Okay. And do you experience this at certain times of the day or is it just kind of all throughout the day? more so when you wake up and you notice it more when you're tired or haven't slept well okay and was the eye twitching something you noticed before you had the concussion a couple years ago or is that newer for you only since you've had the concussion okay yeah so that could either be a symptom of your post-concussive syndrome or it could also be a physical manifestation of your stress. Sometimes our bodies kind of externalize the stress that we're feeling internally so you can only handle so much and you're only able to deal with so much mentally. Sometimes that stress kind of manifests into these physical symptoms that we notice such as eye twitching or lack of sleep, increased anxiety, all of these can be symptoms of stress, absolutely. So we will look into that. I do just want to rule out any kind of neurological deficits. I want to make sure that there's nothing more internal going on, especially since you did have the concussion. And I saw um, in your chart that was updated by your primary care physician that that concussion was due to a right side of the head blow, correct? Okay. Yeah, so that's definitely something that we want to look into just to rule out any further issues. Okay. Um, anything else? Okay, some blurry vision. Both eyes, but primarily on the right side. Okay. When you're driving. Okay. Also, just kind of throughout the day, sometimes you notice that you're, you're having issues like focusing your vision. Okay. Also something that you didn't notice before the concussion. And is that something that you notice has just been increasing recently with your stress levels? Yeah, okay. Okay. Headaches. So kind of at the back of your head mostly, okay. Also sometimes around your temples. Okay, so those locations don't necessarily sound like they're sinus related, so definitely I'm thinking either stress or something related to that concussion. Yeah, okay. Do you take anything for the headaches usually? A leaf? Okay. And does that seem to work for you? If you catch it in time, okay. So if you wait too long it kind of progresses into the migraine phase and then you're unable to treat it adequately. Okay. And at that point, what do you usually do? Sleep. Okay. So once it gets to the point where you now feel that it's a migraine, the only thing that really alleviates the pain is for you to take a nap. Okay. Okay. And would you say you nap frequently? A couple times a week. Okay. You work night shift. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, working night shift, your circadian rhythm is just so thrown off and very confused, so that can cause a lot of other neurological symptoms. Yeah, absolutely. How long have you been working night shift? You usually work day shift, but this is a change for you. Okay. And do you plan on staying on night shift permanently? Okay, so you're just not really sure yet. Okay. All right, is there anything else? Weight gain? Okay. How much weight would you say you've gained recently? Just a couple pounds, but you're noticing. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so you feel like you're snacking more recently. Are you feeling hungrier or do you feel like you're snacking to... Okay, so you feel like it's just kind of a stress reliever for you. Okay. Absolutely. A lot of people tend to turn to food for comfort. So that is completely understandable. Obviously, it is something that we want to keep track of. I don't want you to turn to it so much that it's becoming a problem for your health. So it's something that we definitely should discuss, especially if you're noticing that it's becoming a problem. Okay. So you feel like in times of stress, your first course of action is to just kind of snack on something. Okay, absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing that with me. I know that can be difficult to talk about. Yeah. This is a, kind of an ongoing issue for you. Okay. Well, we can definitely discuss some alternative options. Um, I did read that you are sensitive to prescription medication and you have a family history of addiction. So you kind of want to steer clear of prescription medications if you absolutely don't need them. Okay. Absolutely. So we can discuss some holistic options and some alternative medicine options that will help you kind of alleviate these symptoms, given that we don't find any other kind of more severe issues going on with you. Okay. Okay. So I think we are ready to go ahead and get started with the exam. Um, there are multiple things that I'm going to want to test today, given the symptoms that you've been experiencing. I do want to do kind of a broad range of tests mostly of your cranial nerves because you're having these kind of neurologically based symptoms, um, mostly the blurry vision and the eye twitching. I do want to make sure that these aren't symptoms of anything more aggressive happening, especially with that right side. Yeah. Okay. Well, if it's all right with you, I do want to get started by just having an overall look at your head and neck, your face. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I will be keeping my mask on just for COVID protocol, but you are welcome to go ahead and take yours off. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so I have a light that I'm going to be shining at your face. Um, I will eventually be shining it in your eyes, but for now I just want to have a look at your face overall. So if I could have you kind of sit tall, shoulders just relaxed but broad, and just kind of look right at me or at my shoulder wherever you're comfortable, I'm just going to have a look at you, okay? Okay. All right, so I'm not noticing that eye twitching right now. Have you noticed that your eye was twitching today at all? Okay. Not since yesterday. Just having a look at your skin. Mm -hmm. Under your eyes does look a little Happy, but that's totally normal if you've been feeling that lack of sleep, absolutely. Okay, just gonna have a look at your chest. Not noticing any sort of discoloration or abnormalities in your skin. Yeah, I saw in your chart that you have a history of psoriasis. Okay. And no stress-related breakouts with that recently. Good, okay. Well, let's move on. Before we get started with more of the physical exam, I do want to have a listen to your heart and lungs. So um, if I could just have you sit up straight again, I'm going to be placing this on different parts of your chest and I want you to just breathe normally for me, okay? Heart sounds normal so far. I'm not noticing any tremors or any sort of palpitation. Appears to be a normal sinus rhythm. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to have you take deeper breaths for me. Perfect. Perfect. Now I want you to take a deep breath and hold it in for about three seconds. Okay. Again. Okay. 
Okay, and one more time, hold it in for me. Perfect, okay, so heart and lung sound absolutely perfect. Yeah, no issues with that, which is great, okay. Now we can move on to the next portion of the test, which is going to be testing your vision. So I'm not going to do um, so much of an acuity test, which would be testing like with an eye chart. Mm -hmm. um, if you feel like you've been having any issues with kind of near or far sightedness, I would refer you to an optometrist. For the purposes of this test, I mostly want to test your um, more cognitive abilities, your muscle strength in your eyes, that kind of thing, okay? So I will be shining this light in your eyes. Um, I'm going to turn the light off actually and then I will be shining the light in your eyes. It's going to be fairly bright. If it causes you too much discomfort, I want you to let me know and we can turn the light back on and we'll test it in a different way, okay? Okay. Give me one second. Okay. I know it's, it's pretty dark. Okay, so I'm gonna start by introducing the light kind of at your peripheral vision. So if I could have you just look straight at me. Okay. Perfect. Just having a look at both of your eyes and how they react to the light. pain or discomfort with that okay so now I want you to just kind of look directly at the side of my face so not quite in the middle but just kind of at my cheek down for me so keep your head midline but just focus down okay and then look up and any discomfort with that are you experiencing any double vision here, like where you're seeing the light in two places or where it just looks distorted more than it normally would? A little bit here. As I bring it in, is that just kind of uncomfortable there? Okay. Is that painful at all as I bring it closer? It's uncomfortable. I'm just looking for any specific reaction in that right eye. Mm, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the light back on and we'll finish with the rest of the exam, okay? Okay, I'll let your eyes adjust for just a second. Absolutely. So now what I want to have you do is look at the center of my face and I'm going to have you keep your head straight, but I want you to follow the light with your eyes only, okay? okay. We'll be following with just our eyes. You're doing great. Okay. I'm going to come out a little. Coming closer, still following with just your eyes. Perfect, yeah, looks like I have a little marker on my finger there. <laughs> okay, so you did really well with that. Um, you did say you were having some discomfort, absolutely. Okay, um, I do want to just jot down a couple of notes here. No 
double vision with any of that though, correct? Okay. Yeah, so if you were experiencing double vision, I would be a little bit more concerned. Um, the blurry vision was kind of suspected, as you said, you were experiencing that on a day-to-day -day basis anyway. And then obviously, as a natural reaction to the light, it is going to get a little blurrier as I bring it in. Um, I noticed some slight wincing on that side, as if it was uncomfortable. Okay. Didn't induce any eye twitching there, which is good. Okay. So I am so far suspecting that your eye twitch is more so related to stress. Absolutely. So, like I was saying earlier, those physical manifestations of stress can really, you know, externalize themselves in some odd ways. So you're noticing the eye twitching, the kind of loss of focus in your vision, the increased hunger or need to kind of eat more frequently than you were before. All of those are pretty classic symptoms of stress and given everything that you have going on right now, it's not really surprising. Um, there are things we can do to kind of help you alleviate these symptoms. Yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and keep going if that's okay. Okay. Um, so just the last thing I want to do as a part of your vision test is I'm going to have you look directly at me with your eyes open. Try not to blink. I'm going to bring in this soft cotton tip and I will be touching it to the corner of your eye and it's just going to have your eye close. A natural reaction would be for your eyelid to close. I want to test this on both sides to make sure that we're not having a delay in reaction on either side, specifically the right. Okay. Just look directly at my face. I'm going to bring it in. It's going to be very gentle, slightly uncomfortable. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Ready? Okay, perfect. Okay, so you had an equal and bilateral response there. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go ahead and move on to the next portion of the test, which is going to be... We go ahead and test your hearing we have multiple different things to test your hearing with so let's go ahead and start with the tuning fork um, what I'm going to be doing is testing different facets of your hearing so I'll be making different noises different sounds different tones in my voice to see if you can hear me just conversationally if you're having any issues um, any issues hearing different levels of voice. I also want to test different sounds, as I stated, to see if you're having any kind of lack in hearing of one side or the other. I know that when you had your concussion, initially you were having some issues with your hearing and ear pain on the right side, but that's not something you're really experiencing anymore. Okay, perfect. So if I could have you close your eyes, I'm going to be making this sound on either side, and initially I want you to just tell me if you can hear it, okay? So you'll just say yes if you can hear it. Okay, so go ahead and close your eyes for me. Can you hear this? You can, okay. And on this side, perfect. Were either one of those sides louder than the other? Both about the same? Okay. So now if you can hear it, I want you to say yes. And then when you no longer hear it, I want you to say no. Perfect, okay. Same thing on this side. So let's go ahead and move on to something a little more difficult. I'm going to be making a very slight kind of clicking sound on either ear. I want you to tell me if you hear it on your left or your right side. So close your eyes for me and you can either say left, right, center. You might hear it kind of above or below. Okay, this is testing your directional hearing. Very good. Below. In front. In front. Good. Very good. 
okay so no discrepancies with that and lastly for your hearing I'm going to be using this little puff of air it's going to be very very light um, this is probably going to be the hardest part of the hearing test and I will also be lowering my voice and I want you to tell me how many clicks you hear on each side and if you can hear me talking and understand the words that I'm saying as I do this. So essentially what this is testing for is if you're able to hear more than one thing at a time. So say you're at work and someone's talking to you but you're also listening for something on the other side, I want you to be able to hear things on both sides, okay? So tell me how many clicks you hear and then if you can understand what I'm saying on the opposite side. Okay. Hello. Okay. Okay. And I said hello. Perfect. Giraffe. Giraffe. Perfect. And I said giraffe twice. Okay, we're going to do that again. Air conditioner, yes, I know that one was really quiet. Okay, last one. You didn't hear anything. I didn't say anything. Very good. Yeah, that one was tricky a little bit, but you did really well. Absolutely. Okay. So why don't we go ahead and move on now to sensation testing? There are quite a few things I want to test with your sensation, um, mainly because I want to see if there's any kind of physical deficits on either side. Um, this is going to help really test those cranial nerves. If you're experiencing any sensation loss on one side versus the other, it can let us know if there's something more than just stress that's happening. Okay. So let's start off with probably the most simple. I have a larger kind of spongy tongue applicator here that I'm going to be touching with your face with. Um, I'll just be kind of touching you in various places on various sides of your face and neck and I want you to just say yes if you feel it okay. Are able to feel all of those perfect and now I'm going to be doing that again but this time I'm going to be using a wooden applicator so I want you to just say yes if you feel it yes yes good job This time I'm gonna switch it up and I want you to tell me if you feel, we'll say this is soft and then we'll say this is hard. So you're gonna say soft or hard and I'll be kind of moving them around sporadically, okay? I'm going to be using two wooden applicators and I want you to tell me if you feel one or two so you'll either feel it in one place or in two on various parts of your face okay Very good. Okay, good job. Okay, so let's test sharp sensation. So I have a 
Wartenberg wheel here and this is very sharp and basically I'm going to be rolling this on different parts of your face and I want you to say yes if you feel it. Um, this is testing both your sensation and for any signs of neuropathy. So if you feel any burning or kind of tingling sensations versus loss of sensation, like if you don't feel that at all, or you feel it in some places, but it feels like it's burning or it's like tingly, almost like parts of your face are asleep, I want you to let me know, okay? Okay. You didn't feel any tingling with any of that no kind of fuzzy feeling or okay very good let me just take that down so your sensation test was actually completely within normal limits and no pain with any of those sharp tests let's go ahead and move on to the next portion of the test which is going to be kind of in line with your sensation this time I'm going to be testing hot or cold so I'll be applying something warm to your face versus something that's been in the freezer so this is very cold I want you to tell me if you feel hot or cold or both okay close your eyes for me Cold. Cold. Both. Perfect. Can you tell me what side the hot was on? Very good. Both. And the cold was on. Okay. Both. Perfect. Cold. So there were no deficits with that. You did really well there. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to your taste test. And I am going to be having you taste a couple of different things. So I just have this kind of oral applicator. I will be dipping it into something and I want you to go ahead and taste it. I'll swipe it on your tongue. I want you to tell me if it's sweet, salty, bitter, or sour, okay? And I didn't see any allergies noted in your chart. Perfect, okay. Just get it all mixed together. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Sour. Can you tell me specifically what it tastes like? Lemon. That is fresh lemon juice. I apologize if that's not really a thing. I know it can be a little aggressive. Yeah. I'll let you kind of rinse your palate for a second while I mix up the second one. Ready? If so, then you can do it again. Honey, I know. Honey mixed with lemon. Should have brought you a cup of tea. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to your smell test. And similar to the taste, I'm going to have you close your eyes. We'll occlude one nostril. I'm going to have you 
um, inhale in to smell something and you just tell me what it smells like, okay? Perfect. Okay, ready? Cinnamon, perfect. Okay, and I have a couple more. sure with that one onion yes some people tend to confuse onion with garlic but yes you did get that right it is onion and I have one more this time I'll have you occlude the other near perfect ready just kind of waft it around vanilla perfect that is vanilla bean yes very good. No issues with your sense of smell. You did really well with that. Your taste test was also normal. So, so far, neurologically, everything is intact. There's not anything that I'm noticing that is really acutely abnormal, which is great. Perfect. me while I just catch up on a few notes here. Okay. Okay, so you are doing really well. The next thing that I want to do is test for any kind of abnormalities in your face. And what I mean by that is I want to do some percussing and palpations on your face. So I have a couple different kinds of reflex hammers here. I'm going to be doing some light tapping along your jawline and then we'll kind of move to other parts of your face. I want you to tell me if you feel any pain or discomfort with this, okay? So close your eyes for me. Any pain or discomfort along your jaw here? No, okay. So this time I'm going in with a little bit of a smaller hammer and I'll be doing this just kind of tapping along the top and specifically kind of around the orbital bone on either side and I want you to tell me if this is uncomfortable at all, okay? Just very gentle tapping. Any pain or discomfort here? How about out more so by your temple? And then down, falling down that mandibular bone, any pain there? What about on the other side? Are you feeling any pain or discomfort here? Just kind of orbital socket underneath your eye, no pain or discomfort. And then if we follow down that temporal area, we're going down now by your mandibular bone. Any pain there? Can I have you lift your head up and back? Kind of underneath any discomfort or pain with that no okay okay um i'm gonna have you keep your head tilted back and i'll just be feeling around your kind of collarbone shoulder blades and kind of neck chest area if that's okay yeah. okay any pain here feeling for your lymph nodes as well as just feeling for any kind of abnormalities, any masses or just kind of general pain or discomfort in this area. All of this feels normal. And if we go kind of up behind your ears, a little bit uncomfortable there, okay? Just feels like pressure, okay? That's the area that you've been having your headaches in, right? Just feels more generally uncomfortable. Bit of a lighter touch here. Is that painful? Here. Okay. Just kind of barely touching you there. Is that uncomfortable? Just a little bit painful here. And on this side, just kind of barely, barely touching. Is that uncomfortable? Not as much. Okay. Here. And back 
here if I just kind of barely graze. It's sensitive, but it's not too close. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna have a look back there. If I could have you turn your head for me. in this area. So it's uncomfortable here. Slightly. Okay. okay. Is it more so up at the top or kind of down below your ear here? If you turn your head just a little more, thank you. a little bit of a deeper, gentle pressure. How soft does that hurt? Does it hurt here? What about kind of lower down here by your neck, back of your neck? Mm. Okay. So that was just uncomfortable for you, a little painful. Okay. Have you had any head or neck strains recently? No? Okay. But that's kind of the area where your headaches have been manifesting for the most part. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So I'm going to have you turn your head for me again. I'll be using my tuning fork. This time I'm going to use the opposite side to place some vibratory senses underneath that bone that's behind your ear. I want you to tell me if you can feel it and if it's painful, okay? Can you feel that? Is that painful at all? It's just very intense, okay. And the other side, same thing. You feel it, but it's not as intense on that side, okay. It looks like you're having a little bit of hypersensitivity on the bone behind the one ear. It's almost as if you're feeling things just a little more than you should be. Yeah. Okay. I didn't notice any swelling or discoloration back there. Absolutely. Just a little sore to the touch. And that's where your headaches kind of manifest most of the time. Can I just ask you, have you been noticing any difference in your change of mood lately? Are you feeling more sensitive than you normally would? Do you feel like you're kind of more emotionally than you normally are? You do? Okay. Okay. Like you just have a little bit less control. Totally understandable. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap up our exam for today. So the good news is that I don't think there's anything going on with you neurologically. I do not think these symptoms are anything that are directly related to the concussion you had a couple of years ago. You may be experiencing some mild post-concussive syndrome, which can manifest into a bunch of different things. Essentially, the headaches can be a symptom of that, as well as the eye twitching and the blurry vision. But I really feel like these symptoms are more so related to your stress. Yeah, so it seems like you're kind of waxing and waning more so than you normally are. Your emotions are just kind of labile and you're not so much in control as you would like to be. Um, you have a lot going on in your family right now, so it's totally understandable that you would be having a hard time. Absolutely. Have you talked to anyone about this recently, whether it's like a family member or a friend, a therapist? Not really. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I know it's hard, especially that you're not close to home right now. Okay, 
Well, if it's all right with you, I would like to refer you to someone. Um, I'm not going to refer you to a therapist because you said that kind of makes you uncomfortable, which is totally understandable. That is your right. And I don't want to push. Um, I would like to refer you to our holistic medicine team, if that's okay with you. Um, so because you said you have that sensitivity to prescription medications and you're kind of uncomfortable with that in general, our holistic medicine team is basically there to kind of discuss alternative medicine options with you, whether it be um, self-care options or they can refer you to different spas in your area. Um, they also offer different medicine options that are not prescription based. Okay. Is that something you'd be okay with? Absolutely, I will do that for you. So let me go ahead and put this referral in. Is there any specific availability that you have? Wednesdays are good for you. Weekends, they do have some weekend availability, okay. Kind of later afternoon. Okay, so there is someone who works over at the clinic that I have in mind for you specifically, I will get this referral in and I will have them reach out to you. So they'll reach out via phone and email just so they can contact you and you can respond whichever way you're more comfortable with. So they'll either leave you a voicemail or leave you an email. You can contact them back with your specific availability, but I will let them know that these are the days that you prefer. Of course. Um, They'll do an initial consultation, so you'll go into the office and they, or they can set up a telehealth consult if you're more comfortable with that. They'll ask you a couple questions, ask you kind of what you're interested in, they'll tell you what the options are, and then you can either come to the clinic or they can send you some things to your house. Perfect, okay. I think this is going to be really beneficial for you. In the meantime, I'd like you to reduce your stress as much as possible. I know that seems a little silly. It's kind of hard to do when you work, work full-time, yeah. Okay. Well, if there's anything else you'd like to discuss with me, or if you would eventually like me to refer you someone that you can actually sit down and talk to, like a therapist or a psychologist, I can do that for you. But in the meantime, I want you to just be a little more at peace that there's nothing going on with you neurologically. Of course. Okay. So if there's nothing else I can do for you, I will have you head to the receptionist desk. She's going to give you this referral slip just to keep for your records, okay? And I'll send all this information over to your primary care physician just so they know that there's nothing more serious going on. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I know this was a little more of a difficult visit, but it's important that you came in. And if any of these symptoms persist or you feel like they're just not getting better, I want you to come back so we can reassess, okay? Okay. Well, thank you so much. Absolutely. Have a good day.